I'm Katherine Griss and I'm going to be running the costuming and sewing class for the upcoming schedule session. Um, today I'm going to show you guys how to do a breakaway circle skirt. So this just breaks right off. So in theater it is really important to have costumes that can either be changed on stage if you need to do something that's kind of magical or you need things to change very quickly because actors might only have a matter of seconds in between scenes to completely transform their character. So we are going to accomplish this using fabric, uh, Velcro, and then a sewing machine, or you can also use a hot glue gun if you find yourself really incompetent on a sewing machine. So first I'm going to make my pattern piece. In the class I will teach you how to read a pattern. The patterns are very simple, they're pretty much like the stencil for your fabric. So I made this, this is a circle skirt pattern, it is a quarter of a circle. I got this upper part measurement by measuring the waist of my model, in this case a mannequin, and dividing it by 6.28, and I got 4.45. So I just measured and cut that out, and then it's measured how long I want my skirt to be, and it's about 20 -ish inches. So I took my fabric here, I'm going to use a pink satin polyester today. I folded it in half, and then I folded it again. And then up here on the fold is where I'm going to cut it out. So when I cut this out, it's going to be a complete circle or just about. So I just want to line up my pattern nicely. If you're struggling with patterns, you're more than welcome to pin them down or use pattern weights to hold your pattern in place. You can always just lay out pieces of clothing or costume items and copy the pattern from there. There's a lot of different ways to get the shape and style you want. It is also a good idea to have a mannequin or a friend on standby to have them model your pieces for you so that you know they actually fit. So I'm going to put my pattern piece aside. We don't need this fabric anymore. And if I unfold this, it's going to be a complete circle. Now to do the breakaway part, we're going to need a slit in our circle for the backing with the Velcro. So I'm just going to put, cut right up the back, just where it's going to be. I am using fabric scissors because you should probably, you should definitely not use regular paper or office scissors on fabric because it can damage it. So you pretty much have a donut with a little hole in it. And the next thing I'm going to do is fold up all my edges and pin them. So to do a hem, you want to fold your fabric twice over. So that's actually a good thing to remember, I should have mentioned earlier, is when you're cutting your fabric, make sure to include a little bit of extra called seam allowance. That is the extra room you have to fold up your edges, put in a hem, and that way when you put it on your body, it's suddenly not too small for you to wear. So over here, I'm actually going to pin up my edges here in the back. And then I'm going to pin up all my edges here at the bottom and hem it all the way around. Now, this is where I would use my sewing machine. Here at the stadium costume shop, we have three or four brother sewing machines. These are just really standard. There's nothing too special about them because we don't do anything super, super crazy. We do also have sergers that finish edges if we have a costume that is requiring a lot of durability. But typically, we just use these machines and they hold up pretty well for us. And all you would do on the machine is straight stitch. So I would fold up all these edges twice over. So fold it and then fold it again. And then just stick a pin in it. And then I would run it through my machine once it's all pinned up. If you really don't like sewing machines or you are struggling to learn, you can always use a hot glue gun. Just make sure it is a fabric that is safe for it. In this instance, this fabric is not good for hot glue. It would burn through, but you can use it on cottons or certain types of polyesters. Another trick you can use is a thing called stitch witchery. It's like strips of this gluey tape and you put it on your fabric, fold it over and then iron it, and it pretty much glues the whole thing in place for you. So those are just kind of like tricks you can do if you really need to get something done quickly and the sewing machine is just not cutting it. So I would sew up all around here, these back edges, and sew all around the hem. And this is what it would look like after. I just did it ahead of time so we're not spending much time on the machine. Do something like this. 
So now we have all our nice finished edges and it looks a lot cleaner and nicer now. And the next thing I would want to do is I need a waistband because clearly you need one to hold up your skirt. So to make a waistband, you cut it out to the length of your model. And I made this one about three inches tall and then I'm going to fold it in half with the bad sides together. The bad side of fabric is the side you don't want being shown and the good side of fabric is the side you want to be shown. Get my pins again. I'm going to flip this over and this is the good side of my skirt. This is the side that the audience is going to see. I'm going to take my folded waistband and I'm just going to pin it all the way around. In between steps, make sure you're holding this up to yourself or your mannequin or your friend who's modeling for you to make sure it fits. In a costuming shop, you don't always have that luxury because the actors are either in rehearsal or they're just not present. So it's really important to make sure you have accurate measurements of your actors and performers and to be in communications of them, with them in case their body changes because people do lose and gain weight. Especially, This is also important with children because children are always growing. It's you know, and not unheard of to be making a costume for a child and then by the time the production of the show comes around, they're too tall for it. So it's a good thing to keep in mind that people are always changing their sizes. And that's when you want to leave a little bit of wiggle room in costumes, just in case they might lose weight, gain weight, or get taller. They are all human, so things like that happen. So if I were to make this skirt for an actor, I might make it an inch or two bigger and just place the velcro more strategically so that it can be pulled tighter or looser, just in case the actor's body change. So when I put this, after I put this waistband on, I would stitch all the way around this. Again, you can use hot glue or stitch witchery or some other nifty trick if you don't like the sewing machine. And after I'd pin it, we'd have a nice little waistband on our skirt. And then the next step is gonna be what makes it a quick change or a breakaway skirt. I'm going to grab my Velcro put it over here. Velcro is probably the best, one of the best devices for quick changes. Another commonly used item are magnets. I know Stadium used magnets in the Elsa transformation dress. And I believe they've used hooks and eyes and Velcro for Cinderella's transformation dress, one of the most popular ones to see on Broadway. Um, so it's really important just to learn all about this kind of stuff because almost every show has quick changes or things that transform on stage. So with my Velcro, I'm just going to strategically place it down. I'm going to space it out a little bit. This Velcro does have a sticky backing on it, but it doesn't always hold super well. So again, you can hot glue it. Um, I prefer to stitch down it. That's what I did on my final one. But you can absolutely do what is comfortable for you. You can use glue. Again, you can use the stitch witchery, or you can always find a stronger holding Velcro. I just don't have the highest quality on me, so I'm just going to use what I have. And that's another common thing too is using what's in the shop. We do. We are fortunate here at Stadium to have a very well-stocked costume floor, but sometimes you just got to make do with what you have, and that might mean sending someone on stage with something you threw together in five minutes just because the original plan fell apart. But I think anybody who's worked in theater can relate to that in some capacity. So after we have all our Velcro on, you can start to get kind of creative. You can add doodads, you can add lace and trim. You can start doing things to jazz up your skirt or your dress or whatever you're making and really make it your own. If your character is like a showgirl, you can add glitter, and sparkles. Um, if someone is supposed to be really poor and is supposed to be shown as like starving and hungry and in need, you can always dye it with dirt and other materials to make it look more crunched up. Another thing you could do to make it look more worn out is not even do the hem at all at the beginning. You can skip that step and that makes fabric wear away quicker, which makes it look more worn out and used. So sometimes you'll see that if there's like um, the poor carolers in Christmas Carol, their costumes might technically be only half finished because they're supposed to be more and more and in and worked. So I'm going to put on my last piece of Velcro and clean up my mess. So let's make sure to keep our shop clean because it becomes a disaster very, very quickly. 
So this is a new idea for decoration you can do. I have some sparkly pink trim right here. And we have a pretty well stocked room in here of trims and sparkles and sequins so you can always add. Again, this is something you can just easily hot glue. You can lay a trim out on the bottom. You could even do lace if you want something a little more delicate. You could do individual sequins and you can just have a lot of fun adding different things. You could sew on different fabrics if you really wanted to. Just going back to the Velcro real quick. To make sure this holds, I would put this through the machine and run a stitch through it real quick, just so that it really holds. Because we don't want someone on stage trying to tear it off and then suddenly pieces of Velcro are flying everywhere. So when I put Velcro on it, it looks kind of like this. There's an extra stitch, but the audience won't really see that because you have about 40 feet of room before they, you have about 40 feet um, from the actors to the first row of the audience. So that kind of gives you a little wiggle room for mistakes, which is kind of a blessing to have in a theater arts because normally you have to be very particular and very perfect. But what's nice about costuming is that you can make some minor mistakes and there's a good chance nobody will notice because you do have that extra room. So this is the finished skirt right here. As you can see, we have the tearaway. And I'll show you how it works on a stage. So this blouse is also a tearaway blouse. It has buttons and Velcro in the back. Put our little skirt on. So our actress might be in a show and she might be dancing and then she comes on stage wearing this. And then in the middle of the dance, her costume might need to change and she might need to suddenly show she's in a different setting. So she can tear away her skirt, tear away her top, and suddenly she has a fun outfit underneath to dance in. And then she can also do this backstage if she just needs to change. A lot of performers will wear layers of their costume. So even if they're not changing on stage, it is still necessary for them to be wearing the layers of costume so they can change super quick in between scenes and not waste time and get delayed to it. So I really hope to see some of you guys join me soon in the sewing class. Uh, we can make some things like this, also some other ideas, and we can talk about shows and all the costumings that you might have seen on stage here at Stadium or in other theaters. And I think it'll be a whole lot of fun. I can't wait to see you there.